Uh, let's call this meeting to order. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, I would like to welcome everyone to our uh, uh, hearing today. Since we do not have a quorum, this hearing is for gathering of information where the presence of a single senator is enough. I wish to acknowledge the following resource persons who are here okay, from the Department of Justice, represented by State Counsel Luz A. Makasina, okay, from uh, uh, the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administ Administration, represented by Attorney Robert Chuan, Head of Legal, okay, and uh, from the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, Migrant Workers Affairs, Undersecretary Rafael Segis. Okay, thank you. And uh, Attorney Francisco Noel Fernandez. Okay. And from uh, uh, Blas F. Ople Policy Center and Training Institute, Ms. Susan Ople. And from the Center for Migrants Advocacy Philippines, Executive Director, Elin A. Sana. Okay. Sana. Okay. And from, um, of course, the, the mother of uh, Mr. Sapanta, Ms. Mona Sapanta. Okay. Ayun. Ayun. Okay. And uh, the Chairman of the Filipino Migrants Worker, Mr. Jun Aguilar. And uh, from AXE OFW party list, Mr. John Bertis. Okay. And uh, uh, OFW Movement Inc., Mr. Rodolfo Rashid Fabricante. Okay. Ayun. Okay. So we go on now with our fact finding. Um, we have called this public hearing to discuss the matter of uh, providing assistance, including raising blood money to save the lives of our Filipino, overseas Filipino workers on death row in Middle East countries as expressed in Resolution Number 1727, which I filed. As of 2013, it is estimated that we have around 10.2 million Filipinos overseas mostly our overseas Filipino workers. Every year, more than one million Filipinos leave the country to work abroad with the hope that they will derive sufficient earnings to provide for the needs of their respective families and likewise give them a brighter future. In the Middle East countries, we have around 2.4 million OFWs with Saudi Arabia accounting for approximately 1,020,000 OFWs. And quite a number of them not just endured the hardship of being away from their loved ones, but also have to toil under tough and difficult conditions. It is in these difficult conditions that some of our OFWs, unfortunately, figure as the offenders in crimes of homicide or murder, where the penalty involved death. And in cases of their conviction for the said crimes in Middle East countries, the issue of blood money becomes relevant. Under the Sharia law, blood money in the Arabic uh, is, the Arab, is the financial compensation given to the family of the victim in lieu of the punishment of death. The offender will pay the blood money to the vic victim's family and the latter will in turn execute an affidavit of forgiveness which will have the effect of eventually freeing the offender from the death penalty. Let us take the case of OFW Joselito Sapanta. He was convicted of murder with robbery in 2009 in Riyadh and imposed with a penalty of death for killing his landlord, Sudanese accountant, over a rent dispute and allegedly for taking some cash and mobile phone of the slain victim. For the Sudanese, Sudanese victim's family, to forgive Joselito, they initially demanded blood money amounting to 5 million Saudi Rial, which was later reduced to 4 million Saudi Rial, and then around 44 million pesos. 
Efforts were exec exerted by the Joselitos family, friends, and the Filipino community here and abroad, and the Philippine government to raise the blood money being de demanded by the victim's family. The supposed execution of Joselito were deferred several times upon the appeal by the Philippine government. Later on, it was reported that as, that as of November 20, 2015, the amount raised was only around 1,900,000 Saudi Rial or approximately 23 million pesos, which amount was regrettably not enough to satisfy the blood money demand of the victim's family. Thus, on December 29, 29 2015, Joselito was executed in Riyadh. Senate Resolution Number 1727 seeks to inquire in aid of legislation on the status of the reported 23 million pesos blood money that was raised to save the life of Hosilito Sapanta. In the course of this public hearing, we would like to discuss potential strategies, measures, and policy on how to undertake concerted efforts to actually save our OFs W's on death row, and in the event of the blood money that has been raised could not be used anymore for the purpose intended, we could discuss the matter of possibly utilizing the fund for other worthy programs such as providing help to the family left behind by the OFW or putting in a blood money fund to benefit other OFWs on death row, if so justified. I submit that, that this, it is appropriate to discuss this considering that based on reports, there are still around 80 cases of OFWs on death row in the Middle East, and we do not want a repeat of what happened in the case of Joselito Sapanta, where the efforts led by the government to save the life of an OFW fell short. On that note, let us proceed to the hearing proper. And so, uh, first of all, we want, since uh, uh, we traced the, who's in charge of the blood money of OFWs as the Department of Foreign Affairs, we want to hear the presentation of the Department of Foreign Affairs. We now acknowledge uh, uh, the FA Undersecretary, uh, Rafael Segis, to make the presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Honorable Person, Senator Cynthia Villar, my colleagues uh, in government, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, allow me to convey the sincerest regrets of uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs Albert F. De Rosario for his inability to <laughs> attend this very important meeting as he has just returned from a mission abroad. It is indeed with sadness that we are gathered this afternoon to discuss the aftermath of the execution of Mr. Joselito Lidasan Zapanta last 29 December 2016 in the Riyadh Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. 2015. I'm sorry, 2015. Mr. Zapanta was sentenced to death by the Riyadh Grand Court last June 2. 2009 after being found guilty of murder with robbery. His victim was Mr. Salah Imam Ibrahim, a Sudanese national who was the agent of his landlord with whom he had an altercation over his rental areas. The victim was struck twice at the back of the head with a hammer and his mobile phone and 3,200 Saudi rials were taken by Mr. Zapanta. The incident took place on 26 May 2009. Mr. Sapanta was arrested on 2 June 2009 after he was traced by the police authorities when the, mobi the mobile phone he stole from Mr. Ibrahim was used by Mr. Sapanta's girlfriend who received it from him as a gift. The Philippine Embassy in Riyadh provided Mr. Sapanta with immediate consular and legal assistance during the course of his prosecution and in the appeal of his case after his initial conviction by the trial court. 
This assistance continued until the end, including bringing his mother and sister thrice to visit him in Riyadh in the course of his incarceration. Your Honor, as in the Philippines, the criminal prosecution of an accused carries two distinct offenses. One relates to the public aspect of the crime, or we call that in Saudi public rights, and the second one relates to this <coughs> private aspect or private rights. Insofar as the private aspect is concerned, the family of a murdered, murdered victim may accept blood money in exchange for issuing an affidavit of forgiveness or tanazul. The issuance of tanazul may lead to the reduction of a death, sen of a death sentence of a convict <coughs> into a fixed prison term which consequently spares his or her life. The family of Mr. Ibrahim, the victim, demanded the, the payment of <coughs> 5 million Saudi rials as blood money from Mr. Sapanta. This is approximately 55 million pesos at 11 pesos per Saudi rial. The Philippine government mobilized its entire resources to help the Sapanta family raise the blood money. This included requesting the assistance of the Sudanese ambassador in Riyadh to persuade the family of the victim to accept a lower amount from 5 million Saudi rials to 4 million Saudi rials or approximately 48 million pesos. Through sustained fundraising efforts by the highest officials of the Philippine government, a total of 513,000 208.27 Saudi rials was raised in 2013. An additional 1,321,193.05 Saudi rials was added in 2014. A final addition of 11,352.78 Saudi rials was raised in 2015. This brought the total amount raised for the blood money at 1,845,754.10 Saudi Rials, which is short of 2,154,249.90 of the 4 million being demanded. The donations included acts of anonymous donors who deposited money into the special bank account opened by the Philippine Embassy in Riyadh, specifically for raising the blood money to spare Mr. Sapanta's life. Three deadlines were imposed by the family of the victim. On these three occasions, the Philippine government successfully obtained three separate extensions until the final deadline of two weeks after 13 December 2015. Despite the efforts made by the Philippine government with the assistance of officials from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the government of Sudan, the family of the, vic the victim insisted on the payment of 4 million Saudi rials, notwithstanding the last plea for extension made by the Philippine government as efforts continued to raise additional donation into the blood money, Mr. Zapanta was nonetheless executed on 29 December 2015. Having converted to Islam, and in accordance with Muslim tradition, the remains of Mr. Zapanta was buried in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Your Honor, the amount of 1,845,754.10 Saudi Rials raised as blood money for Mr. Zapanta remains in the special bank account of the Philippine Embassy in Riyadh. With the execution of Mr. Zapanta, the Department of Foreign Affairs inquired from the donors what their respective decision, uh, decisions are as regards the money they have donated. We noted that there were anonymous donors whose whereabouts we could not trace. It's important to us to share with this honorable committee that the donations were made under strict confidentiality arrangement. This confidentiality arrangement has been an important foundation 
upon which the Department of Foreign Affairs and its Foreign Service Post have been able to successfully solicit donations from both foreign and domestic philanthropists. Without this confidentiality arrangement, it is reasonable to expect that our ability to raise future blood money may be imperiled. It would be difficult for foreign donors, for example, to explain why they contribute to fundraising efforts by the Philippine government on behalf of Filipinos already sentenced to death when they are not as benevolent or, or generous to other foreign convicts. We are <coughs> awaiting the decision to the donors on what they wish the Department of Foreign Affairs will do with the money they donated. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you very much, Yusek Regis. Uh, uh, Segis. Uh, we want to hear from the family of uh, Mr. Sapanta and Mr. and Ms. Tuts Ople. So we would like to call on uh, uh, the mother of uh, uh, Mr. Sapanta, Mona Sapanta. Uh, sige po. Uh, Mrs. Sapanta, kung may gusto kayong sabihin, uh, pwede na kayo magsalita. Ang gusto ko ma magandang tanghali sa inyong lahat na nandito. Ang masasabi ko lang sa inyong lahat dito, yung gusto ko lang sana, yung hiniling ko sa, ano, sa DFA at saka sa gobyerno natin, tinatanong ko sana kung ano na ang balak nila doon sa nalikom na blood money? Kasi dalawang buwan na yung anak kung pag dalawang buwan na ngayon, pero wala pa rin ang malinaw sa amin kung ano talaga ang balak nila doon sa ano, na nalikom na yun. Yun sana ang inaano ko. Pwede ba kong sumagot si uh, Yusek Segis doon sa question ni uh, Mrs. Sapanta? Sana sasagot sa kagad kami pero wala pong sagot yung mga donors kung anong gagawin sa mga donations ni Punila. Kaya hindi po po yung makasagot kagad. Uh, uh, meron comment po si uh, Ms. Toots Ople ng Blas Ople Policy Center tungkol dito. Yes po. Um, noong pong December 2012, meron pong pa Christmas party yung Blasef Ople Center, nag-chip in po yung mga OFW families care of sa Ople Center. Maliit lang naman po yung nalikom namin, less than 10,000. Pero ang alam ko po, ito po yung dinonate namin through the DFA. Um, so, pero hanggang ngayon, wala naman pong nagko-communicate sa amin kung ano ang balak namin dun sa na-donate na yun. So, uh, from observation, sa, sa initial pag-uusap namin sa DFA, the donors will donate what to do with the money. So, siguro, pwede na kayong sumulat sa DF, DFA kung gusto nyong ibigay sa sa, ano, sa ke Miss, Mrs. Sapanta or for the benefit of the education of the children of Mr. Sapanta. Siguro, pwede na ang sumulat sa DFA. Di ba bawat donor susulat sa inyo kung ano gusto nila at you will follow the wishes of the donor? Pwede ba yun? Kung ano yung wishes ng donors, uh, hinihintay po namin anong gagawin sa donations nila. Ito so, ay uh, may dinonate through Blas Ople Center. So kung may kailangan kami pirmahan, uh, I think we would like the money to go for the Uh, education of the two children left by ano by uh, uh, Mr. Sapanta. Uh. Po kung uh, ang acknowledge ng ating uh, Philippine Embassy in Riyadh na ang donor ay ang B uh, B B F O P Foundation ang donate yeah. sa kanila po sila na sumulat. Ayos na lang natin 'yon. No? Oo. Ma'am may may request lang po kasi kami dahil hindi lang naman ito lang po yung first time kasi na nakalikom ng pera pero short and nagkaroon ng desisyon na ma-execute. So, using this as a test case, baka kasi ang isa sa nakikita namin problema po, wala talagang in writing. Ano yung guidelines? Ano yung... Parang kahit... Mes, kasama ko po yung pamilya nung sinabi na 
parang meron ng deadline na lumalabas pero hindi siya declared na talagang deadline parang baka may mangyari parang ganun lang kung meron sana malinaw na guideline sa tingin ko mas madali yung in future cases mas madali makakuha ng donations kung alam nung nung uh, donors na merong proseso ano man ma mangyari may may proseso na susundan yung DFA ah uh, Uh, kaya tayo nga naghihiring ngayon kasi hindi naman to about the case of Mr. Sapanta alone. Siyempre, gusto nating makakuha do sa pera na yon para maibigay naman. Not necessarily kay Mrs. Sapanta but uh, parang a trust fund to, to, to make sure that the children of Mr. Sapanta will be educated kasi ang babata nila eh. Oo. Ngayon, uh, itong hearing na to is not only about that. It's also para linawin kung paano ba yung process ng pagkuha ng blood money at kung halimbawa nga yung blood money hindi magamit to save an OFW kung ano naman yung process na gagawin do sa blood money mabuti yung malinaw para kasi tinatanong po kami eh wala kaming masagot so this is an opportunity para linawin lahat and if there is a need for a legislation para ito ay eh, institutionalized, pwede din kaming gumawa ng legislation or kung hindi naman kailangan na legislation, just an executive order from DFA, what what will be the process, di gagawa ang DFA. Nasa atin yun po, kaya tayo nag-uusap ngayon, this is more of gathering information para makorek natin yun. Kasi pangit na tayo ay magtatanungan, tuwing na lang magkukomplain yung family nung namatay. Parang ginagawa lang natin ito dahil may nag-complain. But dapat malinaw tayo dito, di ba? And in, the, in fairness also do sa mga nagdo-donate, kung alam nila na kung ano mangyayari sa pera in case hindi nga na-save na, na yung OFW, I think mas ina-appreciate nila yon. And uh, on the part of the DFA, tingin ko dapat gagawa kayo ng report every time, para hindi na tayo tatanungin. Ibig sabihin, katulad nito, namatay na si Mr. Sapanta, nakahang yung blood money doon, dapat nag-public reporting na tayo kung ano mangyayari doon sa blood money. Kasi kung sasabihin nyo, natatanungin ng donors, at least alam natin na tinatanong ang donors. And siguro, yung mga donors na hindi naman na uh, Okay naman sa kanila, ilabas yung pangalan nila, siguro i-report na natin kung sino donors para transparent tayo. I iwan na lang natin yung anonymous. And siguro, even the anonymous, you can tell us through an executive session kung sino ba yung anonymous donor para nakaka-idea din kami, ano ba, may aasahan ba tayong a certain number of anonymous donors and why they remain anonymous para lang to have an understanding of the of the problem. So, uh, for the purpose of uh, documentation, I just want to ask this question. When was this specific bank account open? Kung hindi nyo po masasagot ngayon, kasi magdo-document lang kami, pwedeng yung mga hindi nyo masagot to follow, no? Oo. Ito po yung mga question. When was this specific bank account open? May sagot ba doon? Madam Chair, Your Honor, wala po kaming data. Pero so, pwede ko take kagad ng may bigay sa iyo mamaya. Oh, you you to follow. Matter. Okay. At isa pa po, susuk na maliwanagan kayo. For the first time in history na rin po. First time na hindi na, na natutuloy ang ano, ang execution kasi hindi kami naka nakakuha ng sapat na amount para Sabi niya money. second time to. First time po ito. Kala ko second. Na time. first time po itong blood money na hindi nagka This is the first time, kasi I thought this is the second time. Madam Chair, this is the first time that the blood money was not sufficient to correspond to the demand of the family. But we received some information years ago, which I informed your Chief of Staff, that we are going to verify if there was an earlier incident, Your Honor. But we have not confirmation on that particular case, Your Honor. Can you make a report on that? Oh. So, ito po yung mga ilalagay. When was this specific bank account open? With what bank was this opened? What is the nature of the bank account opened? 
in cases of raising blood money and of of an OFW who gives authority for the embassy to open such account. What are the internal controls or guidelines in place in DFA to make sure that the fund remains intact and that the fund will be used only for the purpose for which it was collected? Okay. For the record, may we know what is the total amount deposited in such bank account intended to serve as blood money for Joselito sa Panta? May amount ba kayo? Ito yata. Tama ba ito? Uh, uh, sa 1845794? Uh, mabuti pa i-document na lang lahat tapos uh, Mr. Fern Attorney Fernandez and they submit sa amin for purposes lang ng documentation sa amin. At dito tinatanong din kung ano, sino ang uh, nag-contribute Oo. Ngayon, yung anonymous, ilagay mong anonymous, tapos yung payag naman na ilagay pangalan nila, ilagay mo na lang at ilagay mo yung amount and then the total. Okay? And if you can give us uh, confidentially yung mga anonymous donor, if that is allowed, can you give us the list of anonymous donor? Oo. Kung pwede. Was there a contribution from the Philippine government to the fund? Uh, Yusek Segis. Um. Yeah, yeah, okay. I recognize Attorney Fernandez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, remembers we are in possession of two funds to assist our OFWs, the Legal Assistance Fund and the Assistance to National Fund. Both funds cannot be used to contribute towards the payment of blood money. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand there was a COA opinion saying that public funds cannot be used for the payment of blood money, Your Honor. So there's no chance that we can uh, legislate sa GAA to be able to uh, ask government to set am amount of money. In the same manner na sa GAA, nagbibigay kami sa legal assistance fund at uh, repatriation, di ba? Yun yung nilalagay natin sa GAA, repatriation and legal assistance fund. Hindi kami pwedeng mag-legislate ng uh, blood money fund. Your Honor, this opinion was uh, rendered a few years back. I promise your Chief of Staff that I will secure a copy of that opinion yes. in order to allow us to uh, assess the basis for that particular opinion, Your Honor. Kasi nakikita ko po na uh, wala namang masama. Kasi alam mo, uh, ang ating OFW po ay napakalaki ang contribution sa ating ekonomiya. And we call them the modern-day heroes. Uh, from statistics po ang nire-remit nila through formal remittance to us is uh, $25 billion a year. And then yung informal remittance po nila, yung inuuwi nila sa bulsa nila pag uuwi sila hindi dumadaan sa formal is 23, US $23 billion a year for a total of something like $48 billion. So from statistics din po, uh, ang nagkakaproblema lang is 0.1 of 1%. Kasi uh, sinasabi nga mahigit silang 10 million, pero usually ang nagkakaproblema 10,000 every year. So napakaliit pong statistics na nagkakaproblema, kaya kami po, kami, I can answer for all legislators that we are very supportive of any budget that can be given to help OFWs. Kasi maliit lang numero ang nagkakaproblema relative dun sa nagsisilbi naman sa bansa in terms of remittance to the country uh, that keep that keeps the country afloat economically. So, uh, wala pong humihingi ng uh, budget for blood money. So, gusto ko pong malaman kung talagang hindi kami pwedeng mag-appropriate sa GAA ng uh, parang isang fund para hindi too dependent on contribution or donors na maglagay in the same manner na may nilalagay kami sa repatriation, may nilalagay kami sa 
uh, legal assistance, pwede din namang maggawa ng blood money fund para hindi naman tayo dependent lang kung maray sa private, meron kung wala, wala Yes, uh, Attorney Fernandez Madam Chair, if you remember the statement of Undersecretary Segis the blood money refers to the private rights aspect of a case meaning that it is made to compensate a family with regard to the private obligation of an individual which is completely distinct from the public rights which is uh, addressed by the penalty of death or imprisonment your honor i think the first hurdle that we have to address is whether or not public money could be appropriate Kaya nga, we want a uh, uh, formal opinion on that kasi pinag-uusapan natin iyon ang ano but we should make it formal on the part of the DOJ and on the part of uh, nandito yata yung ano eh yung COA COA nandito uh, i uh, I wish to acknowledge uh, there are newcomers, uh, Deputy Administrator of POEA, Attorney Gabriel Domingo, uh, uh, Supervising Auditor Dole Group COA, Ms. Cynthia Vasco, Audit Team Leader Dole and Dole, Dole Group COA, Ms. Alma Bakuli. Sabi nila ang nagbigay daw ng opinion na hindi pwedeng mag-allocate ng government money for blood money is COA. So, ano po masasabi ng COA dito, Ms. Uh, Cynthia Evasco? Nasaan ba yung... Okay. Yung public funds cannot be used for private purposes. Pero yung nagsabi noon, uh, I think it is from the auditor of DFA, we are from the, the DOLE. So uh, the auditor of the DFA uh, should be the one to clarify the, uh, the observation. Oh. The de Department of Foreign Affairs. Not the Department, not the auditor. Wala po because we do not disburse. The department never disburse money to pay blood money. Mm. In the sense, na coming from the budget, no. Mm. Uh, yeah, I just want to yun. be sure. Uh, na talaga hindi pwede, kasi naman uh, kami. So we will be guided accordingly, kasi there's no problem, I think, for for Congress to allocate a certain amount for blood money. Ang gusto lang namin yamin, kasi sabi nyo, it's na it cannot be done. So we want a really uh, 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 what you call that, an opinion, yung official opinion that it should not, it cannot be done. Kasi pwede tayo mag-usap-usap, but if it's not official opinion, eh, parang ayaw namin ng ganun. Kasi parang hindi kami makakatulong dahil sa isang unofficial opinion. Ang gusto ko, para hindi kami makatulong na may official talaga na bawal. Yes, Madam Chair, we'll seek opinion from uh, other agencies, but uh, we have there's a downside on that proposal, uh, Your Honor. If we do that on the law, then all victims of whoever Filipino victims or foreigner victims will Still. demand unconscionable blood money that will be out of control, Indeed. knowing that the Philippine government is, has the law. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. Uh, we will give all the blood money. I'm saying that we can create a fund so that we don't start from zero. Diba? Hindi, tulong lang, hindi tayo ang magbabayad. Mag-fundraise pa rin tayo sa kanila, pero baka naman pwede tayong magbigay, magbigay ng seed fund para naandun yon para makatulong. Hindi, hindi, I'm not saying na uh, bibigay natin yung buong blood money. In the first place, we do not know how much they're going to ask. And uh, one question din ng ating uh, ng, I'm uh, raised by the private sector na halimbawa, yung mga foreigner humihingi sa atin ng blood money, yung bang na, na, napapatay sa atin, nakakahingi rin tayo ng blood money sa kanila. Diba? That's, that's ano, yes, uh, Yes, ma'am. Um, isa yung po sa gusto rin namin i-clarify yung procedures tungkol doon because we have uh, behind me yung mga aggrieved families naman po. Sila naman po yung namatayan uh, overseas. Yung isa po eh, nasaksak yung asawa niya and um, eight, uh, 
eight years na po na nagfa-follow up din ng ng uh, yung sa blood money nga and uh, nagulat na lang po siya na nakauwi na pala yung nakapatay Pilipino rin po yung nakapatay despite the fact na meron silang request yung pamilya na wag pa uwiin hangga't um, yung blood money request ay hindi hindi um, hindi ma-process through the court so ang tanong nga po doon paano nakauwi yung Pilipino na nakapatay doon sa katrabaho niya na wala naman na issue na affidavit of forgiveness wala naman din natanggap na blood money yung pamilya so, paano nakauwi eh yes. di ba dapat nakakulong doon yes po paano nakakauwi yung ganun yes po so ano na po yun um 8 years na po meron din po tayong case na road uh, accident naman po uh, uh, doon po kasi sa um, Saudi entitled din sa under the private rights na may compensation pag namatay dahil sa nabundol o road o car accident kasi sagot naman po rin yun, may mga insurance din naman po doon mm -hmm. siya rin po ay uh, pabalik-balik na rin sa DFA at um, seven years na rin po siya nagpa-follow up ng compensation so parang hindi rin po malinaw yung procedures kung ang namatayan naman ay Pilipino Kaya nga po tayo naghihiring ngayon, hindi lang about Mr. Sapanta. Kasi Mr. Sapanta, kumbaga sa, sa war, siya ang immediate cause. Pero we want to make uh, uh, a definite stand and a definite procedure. Parang this is uh, to learn also from the uh, things that ha have happened before para tayo ay makagawa ng procedure and a definite uh, stand on things o so, kung kailangan ng legislation kung kailangan ng executive order or para maliwanagan ng tao para hindi confuse ang tao. But actually yung mga hearing sa Senado, uh, malaking bagay po yung this is informative para yung mga tanong ng mga tao na sasagot natin through our hearing. Hindi naman tayo dito na andito para mag-away-away or or uh, pahirapan natin yung mga ibang department ng gobyerno, we do this hearing to clarify things para yung mga kababayan naman natin, lalo na yung ating mga kababayan na hindi naman mahihirap, na hindi naman makalapit basta-basta, para i-clarify natin, para naiintindihan nila. At in, on our part, pag tinatanong naman kami, kasi palagi kami ang natatanong, dahil kami ang mga public official, on our part, alam din namin yung isasagot namin kasi marami silang tanong na hindi rin namin alam ang kasagutan. Kaya we are conducting this hearing to educate ourselves and kung meron tayong pagkukulang sa ating communication, sa ating mga rules, sa ating SOP, eh, siguro it's time na gawin natin para na, natututunan ng ating mga kababayan. In fact, one of the reasons why we want to establish an OFW department, department for OFW, kasi yung confusion, saan ba sila pupunta? Sa DOLE o sa DFA? <laughs> kasi, ano eh, merong cases, merong mga problems na DFA ang magsusolve, may problems na DOLE ang magsusolve. So, ako, I know na pag, pag ang problem eh, illegal, yung mga illegal uh, OFWs, DFA yan. Pag yung legal, dole yan, OWA yan. Kasi member sila ng OWA, OWA should take care of them. But hindi po yan alam ng mga tao in general, or ng mga pamilya ng OFWs in general. And we have to inform them. If we have to make a book in Tagalog para maintindihan ng ating mga kababayan kung ano ang problema, ano ang gagawin, siguro maganda rin na gumawa tayo ng ganun libro para handbook, para meron din kaming handbook dito sa Senado para pag natanong kami, parang titingnan mo lang doon ano ang sagot. Alam mo nang sagutin ng mga tao, di ba? Kasi maraming pumupunta sa amin, nagtatanong. Misan, kaya nga ako nagpahiring dito, tinatanong ako ni Mrs. Sapanta kung ano nangyari sa blood money. Hindi ko rin siya masagot kasi hindi ko naman alam yung policy sa blood money. And it's only now that we are talking to DFA that we are clarifying things. So, yun lang ang reason natin. Kaya siguro after this hearing, we will find all, we will uh, 
uh, ano, list down all the questions asked and then the details asked and then we should provide answers and we, we should make a, a policy then and a procedure on how to go about these problems. Di ba? So, yun ang ano. Ngayon ang question is not only, Attorney Fernandez, it's not only about ROFWs na nakakagawa ng crime na hinihinga ng blood money, na nagre-raise ng blood money para ma-save. It's also yung ating mga namatay na mga OFW Filipino na dapat may blood money sila what are what what are their rights ano pwedeng gawin para makaklaim naman sila oo yung mga question na yon so uh, two way na to in fact kaya kami nag uh, nag uh, ano nag uh, hold ng hearing na to kasi yun din ang another question it's not only the case of Mrs. Sapanta and uh, Mr. Sapanta but the case of others na may the same problem Uh, pinatatanong rin po kung uh, uh, bakit yung ibang iba nag-succeed ito hindi nag-succeed. Uh, meron ba kayong nakikita na reason why some uh, fundraising for blood money succeeded and some did not? Mer meron bang ano? Yes, at uh, sec sa, you sex segi. Sa experience ko po dati po ko ang bahay sa Saudi Arabia po. Uh, ito pinakamalaking demand ng biktima. Ano ba ang range usually po ng blood uh, money? Actually, may cap ang binibigay ng cap ang uh, Royal uh, Court. Uh, up to 400,000 reals. Pero, that is only for guide and guidance lang yan. They, 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 cannot, they cannot impose on the victim to demand higher uh, blood money. Yun lang ano, yun lang ang yun ang lang problema diyan. Uh, nung araw po, um, ang demand about wala pang about 1 million 400,000 ang 200,000. Madali kami nakakuha ng mga donors. Mismo doon mismo Kataka sa nga ano. Po ako dito. Kung ako mayaman ba yung Sudanese kasi kung bibigyan na pamilya ng 23 million, hindi pa niya tatanggapin eh considering kung patay na yon, hindi na naman maibabalik yon, di ba? Bakit? Nagtataka rin ako, ba't hindi tinanggap yung 23 million? Uh, talagang pinupursigi, talagang pinapahirapan talaga. Actually, yung, yung Sudanese family, gusto talaga silang ma-execute sa Panta. Talagang alam nilang hindi natin maabot yung limang milyong Saudi Reals. Uh, tsaka, even uh, yung mga kaibigan po natin sa Saudi government, tumulong po sila, nakikiusap, kapwedeng babaan nun. Nakikiusap po sila, last minute yung Office of the Governor, nakiusap po sila na pwedeng kinausap yung biktima, na pwedeng babaan, at i-hold mo muna, bigyan uli ng pagkakataon na mabarilits namin yung 4 million. Pero ayaw na talaga. Definitely sabi ng biktima, no. No, no, no. Or in, in Arabic, la. Yun po ang problema natin. Meron dito nga information na based on our research, we gathered that in March 2014, the Office of the President issued Administrative Order 41 Series of 2014 creating an interagency committee for the formulation and implementation of the guidelines on giving governmental assistance to OFWs in distress. This committee shall be composed of re representatives from the Office of the Vice President, Office of the Executive Secretary, DFA, DOLE, DOJ, DBM, DSWD, DOH, and the PMS. Were there guidelines recommended by this interagency committee? Here from Attorney Fernandez. Ma Madam Chair, uh the Blood Money Committee was uh, chaired by the Vice President, then in his capacity as Presidential Assistant for OFW Matters. I came into UMA after that uh, body already stopped meeting, Your Honor, but I understand that there were some uh, meetings that took 
place if your honor will permit us we can go search for the minutes of the meetings and we can share the outcome of these meetings with your office yeah because uh, we want also what are the recommendations that came about but that will serve us that will we will add that to the ideas that will come this afternoon para kung nag-isip na sila kung paano gagawin nila ma masama sa ating pag-iisip para makagawa tayo ng magandang guidelines for this kind of problem. Uh, Joselito Sapanta went to Saudi Arabia as an overseas contract worker in 2007 and I presume that he is an OWA member. So gusto naman natin uh, madinig yung OWA kung ano na itulong nila kay Joselito Sapanta at ano ba ang uh, itinutulong nila for those who are similarly situated. Uh, we can hear, can we hear now from the OWA? Uh, ba, uh, Attorney Robert Chuan, Prof. Sa OWA po. <coughs> Basa, base po sa research namin, si Mr. Sapanta is an inactive OWA member, having paid his membership on December 27, uh, 2007. Uh, siya po, siya hindi na uh, active member ng OWA, si Mr. Sapanta po, uh, ang OWA po, Kailan siya po nag-member ng OWA? 2007, bali two years po yung kanya. Oh, and, and natukulong na siya ng 2009 eh, kaya hindi na po siya talaga pwedeng uh, magbigay. So Tama, ano right. ano ginagawa nyo? Alimbawa, OWA member, tapos nakulong. Ano ginagawa nyo? Ano ang, ang ano nyo doon? Ang, uh, ang inyong uh, pa polisiya tungkol sa ganun? Can you explain to us para alam din ng mga OWA members na halimbawa OWA member ka tapos nagka problema ka ano maaasahan mo sa OWA okay. kung siya po ay active member ng OWA how can you be an active member of OWA kung nakulong ka dapat nga doon nga magi-start ang pagtulong nyo kasi yung kasi ganyan yan eh di ba pag uh, uh, member ka tapos nagka problema ka ano ibibigay mo kasi hindi na pwede magbayad ng OWA fees kasi nakulong na nga o oh, ano gagawin natin pag ganun ibig mo sabihin eh pag uh, ikaw nagka problema wala ka nang maaasahan sa OWA uh, in coordination po ng DFA bumibisita po kami sa mga jail po yeah, yeah. ano ginagawa nyo pag nag uh, Pag gano'n, na nagka-problema na, mo, member nyo, nagka-problema na, ano ang gagawin nyo? Nagko-coordinate po kami sa DFA pa, together with the, the uh, team, no? Para bisitahin po yung ating, uh, uh, ating mga kababayan sa, sa, sa prison. Wala ba kayong, halimbawa, nagka-problema ang gano'n, automatic, bibigyan nyo ng tulong kasi nagka-problema. Ano ba na, pwede natin tanungin si Mr. Sap? Mrs. Sapanta, ano ba na-receive nyo sa OWA after magka-problema yung, yung anak? Wala po, ma'am. Wala. Wala po. Wala bang entitlement si Jose Lino Sapanta aside from bibisitahin nyo? Uh, gaya ng sinabi ko po, ang OWA po ay uh, handang tumulong, mag-provide ng aid sa kanyang pamilya, no? Uh, yes. Uh, 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 FW Movement Inc., Mr. Fabricante. Chairman. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, bilang veteran ng OFW po na 30 years sa Saudi Arabia, walong OFW po ang nakita kong pinugutan sa harapan namin. Critical po kami rito at nabuksan yung issue ng guideline kasi huling-huli po rito, why does the government so oversell us with the case of Don Don Lanusa? Yun ay tatawang ni Madam Chair kanina eh. Natulungan natin si Don Don Lanusa, bakit si Sapanta hindi? And, 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 Magkano ba hiningin kay Lanusa? Magkano binigay na hiningin blood money kay Lanusa? Something like 32 million, Madam Chair. So, na-raise ang 32 million. Yes, and uh, I believe uh, CFO, uh, in the person of uh, Madam uh, Lewis, I think, uh, tumulong po mga film natin sa America, plus yung mga private sector natin, NGO natin, the government. Ang so, gusto... hindi po to na si ano lang ang pinakamalaki ang hiningi. Meron ding malalaki ang hiningi. Si Don Don Lanusa daw, 32 million. 
Si Don Dolanosa, below 5 million po yun. Sigurado. Pesos, uh, Yusek? Uh, okay, let me clarify, uh, ma'am. In, in, in lieu of uh, figures, <coughs> wala, po namang, wala pa namang uh, uh, yung issue po ng amount of payment ng DIA, wala pong distinguish, distinguish, uh, distinguish, uh, distinguishing distinction dyan kung Uh, Muslim ka o hindi, babae ka o lalaki ka. Uh, sinasabi nyo na, na, sinasabi nila na ito daw so far ke sa panta, ang pinakamalaki hiningi. So, sinasabi nila, syempre, totoo naman yon. Pag mas malaki ang hiningi, mas mahirap i-raise, di ba? Hindi naman sa nothing personal about it. But according to record po, si Don Don Lanusa, ang hiningi po ay SAR 3 million, which is about 33 million. Tama, sinabi niya Pesos na 33 million. Na fund ratio 33 million. Malaki rin na, na fund ratio. So, bakit successful si Don Don Lanusa, si, si ano, sa Panta, hindi successful? Yung kay uh, Don Don Lanusa, pati po yung hari nagbigay, tinakpan niya ang pagkukpagdag ko ang kulang, tinakpan niya para mabuo yung uh, demand ng biktima. Kaya po, uh, ano, yung hari yun. po, King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz gave SAR 2.3 million out of the 3 million. So, bali, ang ni-raise lang is 700,000, which is about 7 million pesos. So, kaya siguro nagtagumpay sila doon. Kasi depende din daw do sa hari. Eh. Binabasa yata ng hari yung storya. And then, kung tingin niya, dapat tulungan, tumutulong siya. Kung hindi, hindi siya tumutulong. So, hindi natin sakop kung ano yung opinion ng hari or ng mga prince doon sa Saudi. So, you can say na Don Don Lanusa was successful because nagbigay yung hari ng napakalaking amount. Okay. Ma Madam Chair, I would like to continue. Uh, Kapiraso lang po ito. Uh, Yusek, he was our former ambassador and uh, through his efforts, marami pong nangyari doon na uh, first first time sa amin sa community. Ang gusto po namin i-drive ngayon dito, panahon na na ilagay natin sa tamang perspective na magkaroon ng tamang guideline from the government. Because in some Muslim countries, you said, you know very well, they set guidelines. You said, you mentioned about capping. Yeah, we do understand. But mind you, yung case natin sa Taif, tatlong pinugutan ron. No? Even the government, we have a case in Taif before. In, in Taif where? Area. where? In Taif area po, sa kingdom po yan, oh. sa Saudi Arabia. Oh. Uh, tatlo po yung napugutan ron na biglaan. Uh, I am not so sure if the government intervened with that. Gusto ko lang pong puntuhin yung sinasabi ng OWA kanina. Uh, we sabihin ng pangalan, anong date, we'll go para masabi natin sa ating ating uh, hearing para nagkakaliwanagan tayo kasi we'll uh, kaya nga uh, tayo naghihiring dito para liwanagin lahat ng maayos para um, this will form the basis of pag paggawa natin ng guidelines natin kasi kailangan marami tayong example para makukonsider natin lahat yung mga problema para maganda yung magawa nating guidelines. We're not here to only for Mr. Sapanta, because tapos na yun eh. No? But uh, we are here to learn from our mistake. Yung pagkakamali natin, makorek natin, di ba? Through our experience. Kasi yung experience lang natin ang magtuturo sa atin how to correct our mistake. So, para hindi na mangyayari in the future. We're here to learn from our past experiences and then uh, uh, make something out of them. So, i-request ko lang po sa inyo, right. Mr. We'll provide Kante, yung yeah. mga sinasabi nyong uh, kinocomplain nyo, i-document natin para makita natin yung istorya nila. Kasi dito, kitang-kita na kaya naging successful yung kay uh, Don Don Lanusa, nagbigay yung King of Saudi Arabia ng substantial amount which made the blood money affordable. Although malaki yung 33 million, ibinigay nung King is around... Uh, Almost everything, kasi ang natira na lang, 23 million binigay niya uh, out of 33. Pa, and then, uh, 26 million out of 33. 7 million lang ang ni-raise nung, ano, eh, nung, ano, nung pamil ng ating department, DFA. So, parang walang comparison yon kasi malaki binigay nung... Uh, we'll provide the chair, uh, uh, Yeah, so, yung sinasabi mong mga namatay, what happened there? Mag meron bang 
Now, na notice ang ba, we were, were we given the chance to raise blood money at magkano ba hiningi? Can we really raise the blood money? Okay. Well, we're caught flat-footed during the time, Madam Chair. Nasa Riyad yeah. po ako, biglaan Ayun, po yun. Gusto ko ang bumalik ah. sa ano, kasi hindi sila sure sa kanilang ano. Pwede ba i-document natin at i-submit natin? Gusto ko lang bumalik po sa OWA kasi nagugulat po ako, uh, pwede lang natin tapusin yung OWA na pag may problema ng ganito, ano ba pwede nyong gawin aside from dadalawin nyo yung, ano, hindi naman pwede nyong sabihin na dadalawin. Hindi naman uh, kadami-daming pera ng OWA tapos sasabihin nyo sa amin, dadalawin nyo yung may problema. Eh, hindi naman acceptable yon Magsabi kayo, ano ba policy nyo? Kasi kung wala kayong policy, it's time you make a policy na pag may member kayo, nagkar nag nagkaroon ng dist distress affair yung member nyo, ano yung gagawin nyo? Dapat definite yon Kasi kahiyahiya naman, ang yaman-yaman ng OWA, tapos wala mang itutulong sa ating mga distress OFW. So, can you say something about that? Kaya nang sinabi ko po, Madam, uh, uh, maliban sa pag, uh, pagbisita namin sa mga, uh, sa mga biitan na, na in coordination po ng, ng DFA, kung anong pangangailangan po ng OFW sa kanyang biitan, gaya ng personal necessity niya, eh, kami ang nagbibigay po. No? Bihin nyo sa akin kung ano'y tinulong nyo kaysa Panta. Uh, kasi sinasabi nyo kung ano pa nga nga ilangan, ay, just tell me what you have done for Mr. Sapanta. I-document nyo para hindi naman kahiyahiya ang OWA na may problemang ganito. At kung hindi nyo man natulungan si Mr. Sapanta, sino natulungan nyo? At ano ginawa nyo? E, yun lang ang gusto naming malaman para kung malalaba sa ating uh, Uh, information gathering, wala kayong naitulong, may kailan, siguro it's time na we make a policy. Ano ba yung basic na itutulong nyo na minimum na itutulong nyo sa OFW? Hindi pwede yung walang itutulong. Medyo nakakahiya naman yun, di ba? Pwede ba yon? Sige po, magbibigay po kami ng magbibigay report. Magbibigay kayo ng report. O si Ms. Uh, John Bertis ng AC OFW Party List. Magandang hapon po, Madam Chair. It's, uh, I would like to direct my questions to OWA. Kasi nung uh, active member pa po kasi si Sapanta, ma'am, eh, by the time na, na nakulong siya at nahatulan. At mali rin po yung sinasabi nila na dinalaw nila si Sapanta. So, ang ano kun, uh, si Husilito po. So, ano ba yung ano, bilang OFW kasi, uh, pagka ang isang nakulong ba, by the time na nakulong or nahatulan, active member, inaantay nyo na lang bang ma-expire ang uh, OWA membership nila at sasabihin nyo, ay, un undocumented na yan or ay, ay, expire na yung uh, uh, OWA niyan, wala nang matatanggap niyan. Just imagine, marami pa po kaming hawak ng mga OFW na walang makuha sa inyo. Tulad just very recently, yung sinalubong natin sa airport na binugbog. Wala, wala kaming maasahan sa, sa OWA just because... Nine years ago na raw siyang ano, walang, uh, walang uh, membership. Marami rin pong uh, nakakulong ngayon na na-expire na ng OWA. By, but by the time na nakulong sila, active yung membership nila. So, eto, TY na lang ho ba to? May, may, may tama po yung rason ninyo. As, as of now, uh, wala pa tayong clear-cut na polisiya tungkol sa mga ganyan. Siguro in the near future, Uh, magkakaroon tayo ng ganong pagkakaroon. Ano ba entitlement ng any uh, OFW from OWA? Kung siya ay mamatay po ng ordinary death, eh, may 100,000 oh. plus 20,000 sa burial. Kung aksidente po, eh, 200,000 plus 20,000. So parang kumuha ka lang ng life insurance. Kasama po yun. Accident insurance. Ibig sabihin, magmamember ka ng OWA, eh di kukuha na lang ako ng life insurance at saka... Uh, debt insurance. ba diba? Parang napakasimple naman noon. Isa, yes. isa oh. lang sa component po. Oh, ano pa yun? Mabuti pa, ilista nyo lahat yes, yun para makita natin kung, kasi tingin ko, sabi ko nga, based on statistics, we have uh, 10 million OFW approximately. And ang nagkakaproblema sa kanila is 0.1 of 1%, 10,000. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng 10 million nagbayad sa inyo, pero ang nagkakaproblema lang is 0.1 of 1%, which is 10,000. So, siguro naman, yung perang umaabot sa inyo, eh siguro naman, mas maganda ibibigay nyo doon sa nagkakaproblema. Kasi yun nga ang reason for OWA, para yung 
yung pera ng lahat magamit para pag may nagka-problema, hindi naman zero yung nagka-problema. Ganun yun eh. Pa, yan ang tinatawag nating social security, di ba? Kayo kasi parang social security ng OFWs, di ba? So, it should be more than na bibigyan nyo pag namatay o pag naaksidente, doble. Eh, ganyan din ang insurance, di ba? Pag bumili ka ng insurance, talagang doble ang indemnity pag accident Tapos pag life, eh, sickness, uh, yung ano. Pero hindi eh, naman siguro ganun lang ang balak ng OWA. Ano pa yung iba nyo ibibigay? Sige po, magbibigay po kami ng uh, complete report po. Ron. Ano? Magbibigay po kami ng complete report ng mga nabigyan namin ng tulong. O, oh, sige. Kasi parang masyadong napakababaw naman noon pag sasabihin nyo na kung mamatay, 100,000. Kung namatay by accident, 200,000. E paano na yung 10,000 nagkakaproblema? Out of the 10 million, wala ba kayong balak itulong doon para naman tayong lahat dito sa gobyerno natin magkatulong-tulong tayo. May tulong ang DOLE, may tulong ang DFA, may tulong kayo. Oh, and yes, uh, Mr. Jun Aguilar. Yes. <coughs> ah, salamat po, Mr. Chair. Uh, ah, Ms. Chair, Madam Chair, sorry. Um, yun po kasing ano, yun, yung uh, sa benefit sa OWA, ano po. Normally kasi, pagka tayo insured dito sa ating bansa, like for example, naguhulog po tayo ng bahay sa pag-ibig, namatay tayo, eh, automatic po yan na uh, yan eh, uh, hin hindi po ba? Papayaran ang pag-ibig kasi kukuha kayo ng insurance Opa. for your mortgage. Exactly mortgage po. redemption insurance. Exactly so, pag, uh, pag uh, namatay ka, automatic bayad ang bahay mo kasi may mortgage redemption insurance ka. Oo, yun. Sa bahay yun. O, ngayon. O. Uh, yun po yung gusto ko sanang uh, tingnan kung posible na in the case of Mr. Joselito Sapanta, at the time when, when he was uh, accused and he was... Uh, Uh, given a sentence, member po siya ng OWA. Mm. But unfortunately, it took time bago siya na-execute dahil mm. uh, siyempre po mahaba yung, mm. yung proseso. So, nung time na siya ay pinugutan, mm. expired na po yung kanya. Naturally, mm. expired na po yung mm. kanyang uh, OWA. Yung OWA membership. No? So, that's the reason why he is not getting anything out of what yeah. he has paid Kanil for. Kailangan po siguro based on this make a write-up. Siguro po, may provision kayo na lahat ng member nyo na magka-problema, may ano, parang, parang automatic habang may problema sila, oh, member pa rin sila, ba? Diba? Kasi natural, pag nagka-problema, paano magbabayad ng OWA membership eh, nagka-problema na. Dapat may ganon. To the point na gagawa kayo ng program na ganon to cover that, But that should be the case kasi wala naman masyado maghahabol sa inyo kung walang problema. Ang naghahabol sa inyo, yung may problema. Yun ang nangangailangan ng tulong nyo, yung mga problema. Kaya nga sinasabi ko sa gobyerno, 10 million yan. 10,000 lang magkakoproblema. Pagbutihin na natin how we help the 10,000 because konti lang naman sila relative to the total. Eh, ang nangyayari... Parang napapabayaan pa natin yung 10,000. Eh, maliit lang naman yun relative to the uh, number. And yung namang 10 million na yun, ang laki ng kita sa, ang laki ng tulong sa ekonomiya. So, siguro, as a, com a compensating factor, yun lahat na magkakaproblema, ayusin na natin ang kanilang benefit para hindi naman nakakaawa sila. At least, yung mga nag-OFW na pupunta sa abroad, eh, masasabi nila sa sarili, eh, I'm willing to take the risk kasi kung magka-problema naman ako, maraming itutulong ang gobyerno sa aking pamilya. So, parang magkampante ang loob nila na naandun sila sa abroad kahit hirap na hirap sila kasi alam naman nila na kung sakaling magka-problema sila, their family will be taken care of. Yun lang. Madam Chair, yeah. uh, itutuloy ko lang po yung uh, tungkol dun sa blood money. Kasi po, ah, uh, Marami rin po kasi yung mga namatayan, yung mga victims. In fact, some of them are here. Uh, I will cite two example po no na kung saan yung binabanggit kanina na nakauwi yung yung nakapatay nang walang inis yung tanazul, yung namatayan. So, napaka-imposible pong isipin na paanong nakauwi ang isang nakapatay, nakakulong po 'yan, 
nang wala pong ibinigay na kahit anong blood money at wala pong tanasul na inisyo yung namatayan. I will cite two example, Madam Chair. Yun pong isang kaso sa Qatar, si June Berdus. And then, yun pong kaso rin nung uh, Abha, Love Triangle, alam po ng mga taga-DFA yan, na kung saan ang mga involved po dito ay Pinoy. So, na, 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 nakikita po natin yung sakit ng loob ng isang namatayan, katulad po nung nanay ni Jose Lito Sapanta na naririto, mas matindi po yung uh, kaanak nung namatayan sapagkat wala pong nakuha maski magkano. Yan po, 23 million di nga tinanggap eh. Yun pong nakauwi na isinasahit ko pong dalawang example na to, wala po ni Singko natanggap. Ang pinagtatakan po namin, papaano itong nakauwi at paano ito nangyari na walang binayaran at walang tanasul po yung, ano, yung uh, uh, namatayan. Kasi po yung tanasul napaka-importante. Besides the money, it's the, ano, it's the tanasul o yung pong letter of forgiveness noong agreed party nung namatayan ang dapat pong masa, ma, matanggapin noon pong uh, accused. Ano po? So, ito po sa kaso, itong dalawang kaso na to, one in Qatar and one in Abha, pareho pong nakauwi yung mga nakapatay nang wala pong ibinayad mas kising kong blood money. Uh, can you give us the documentation of the, those two cases para i research namin uh, what happened so that malinawa natin? Kasi nagtataka rin ako paanong nakauwi eh, nakakulong, di ba? Ano uh -oh. ba? Paano, I mean, yung ito nga, pag foreign, ibig mo sabihin, pag foreigner ang pinatay at uh, ipupugutan ng ulo, pag ang kapwa Pilipino pinatay, eh, makakauwi. Uh, is that really what's eh, happening, uh, Ms. Ople? Yes, ma'am. Um, ang nangyayari po kasi, parang nakafocus dun sa ma-execute na OFW dahil may napatay. Pero marami ring mga case na very quiet lang dahil hindi na focus sa media na sila yung namatayan habang OFW sa Saudi o sa Qatar yung kanilang mga asawa. Nandito nga po si Mrs. Michelle Bedrus, yung asawa po niya yung si Rogelio Bedrus na nasaksak ng kapwa Pilipino in 2007 pa po yun. Hanggang ngayon po, ang dapat na blood money imposed by the court na sana tatanggapin niya ay nasa 3.6 million pesos or 300,000 Qatar Rials. Pero hanggang ngayon po, wala pa rin po siya natatanggap. At nung na nakauwi na sa Pilipinas, nung nakauwi na pumatay. Yes so, po, nakauwi na po. That. Siguro, sino ba ang agency na makakaalam nito? DFA. DFA ba? Recognize uh, Yusek Jesus Chavez of DFA and uh, Mr. Carmelita Nuki, President Philippine Migrants Rights Watch, and Ms. Maria Fe Nicodemus Kakampi. Okay. Can we hear from Yusek Chavez? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, as you know, uh, the Tanasuls, the blood money, these are all dependent on the aggrieved party. Uh, if they are, if they issue the Tanasul, then that's, uh, that's usually based on uh, for a consideration of a blood money. Now, the blood money, eh, yung blood money, siyempre, uh, kung kayang bayaran nung nakapatay o nakapag, nakasala, hindi naman kailan nakapatay noon, ang nagsala, no? eh, usually binabayaran na nila at yung mga kaibag-anak, yung mga kaibigan, ang nag-co-contribute doon. Uh, ang role ng gobyerno ay eh, tumulong sa pag-solicit uh, ng mga blood money. Ito po ang question po is, napatay yung kanyang asawa, uh, may blood money, hindi siya binayaran, hindi siya nag-issue nung, ano, nung certificate of forgiveness, pero nakauwi yung pumatay dito. Uh, sa Pilipinas. Can, can we look into that? Uh, uh, we will look. We will look into that uh, case. There are two cases na napatay yung kanilang asawa. Hindi naman sila binayaran ng blood money. Na 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 pakawalan tapos nakauwi ng Pilipinas. What happened there? Kasi dito yung ibang case eh, pinugutan ng ulo, but ito nakauwi ng Pilipinas. So I guess we have to document that and we will give an opportunity for DFA to answer. Kasi alam nyo, 
Uh, kami naman po ay very good ang experience namin sa DFA at DOLE so far. Pag kami ang may complain, talagang umaakto naman sila at tumutulong. Misang kasi yung ating mga complain, hindi na-channel properly. So, hindi alam sa higher up ng DFA yung nangyayari sa baba. So, I guess it's uh, in, in fairness, we should give them a chance to comment on this. Kasi nakakapagtaka to. Nakapatay, nakakulong, hindi naman nagbigay ng blood money, nakauwi, nakaalis sa kulungan. Medyo naiiba yata ito. Diba? And there are two cases. Diba? Two cases ba? Okay. Uh, yes, Mr. Yeah. Misana. Thank you, Chair. Uh, siguro po doon lang sa usapin ng Pilipino na meron ding reward, well, may blood money dapat na ibinigay. Ito po ay nasa OMWA ng matagal na pong panahon simula pa nung kay Yusek Kaday, Lindes Kaday. Hindi ko po alam kung ito ay na-settle na, na uh, to si Fen ng kakampi noong pong panahon nasa kakampi. Ako yung issue ng vehicular accident ni Lising. Leonardo Leasing, na meron siyang blood money na 50,000 riyals at immediately po ay inayos ito nung naka-aksidente naka sa kanya. 1994 po siya na-aksidente. Dapat procedure lang yung gagawin, administrative procedure. Pero hang, eh, hindi ko po alam po hanggang ngayon po hindi pa po yan na, na ibibigay doon sa pamilya. Nagkasawaan na po kami ng pamilya ni Mrs. Leasing dito. At nakailan na pong USEC, nakailan na pong ambasador, sa akin pong pagkaalam ay hindi pa yan na-settle. At palagay ko ang may pagkukulang ngayon ang ating uh, gobyerno doon sa bahagi na yun. Kasi yung pera po, eh, chinek pa namin sa bangko, eh, naruroon pa po. Kaya nakabi ko, baka pa expiration ito, ay sayang naman yung pera. Yun po yung isang, isang issue. Pangalawa po, Chair, Napaka, natu, nakikinig ako sa inyo at sinasabi nyo na 0.1% lamang ang may mga problema. Sana po... Based on study po yun. Kasi pinatanong ko nga kung out of 10 million, ilan na nagkakaproblema. Kasi minsan, ang reason why hindi natin matulungan sa laki. Pero ito, malit lang to eh. 10,000 out of 10 million. So, parang ako, pag ganyan na statistics, eh... Hindi naman masyadong mahirap yan. Okay. Gusto ko po sanang maniwala doon. Pero alam din po namin, Madam Chair, na for example, in the GCC and other Arab countries, mas ot, last recurso po ng mga maraming OFWs yung nagpapail ng reklamo, whether formally or informally. So lalo na po yung ating mga migrant domestic workers and the other low-skilled workers, hindi talaga immediately nagre-reklamo for as long as they can. Kasi ang bottom line nila, we want to keep our jobs. Ako okay. naman dito po sa Senate, ayoko naman pong bilangin yung hindi naman na <laughs> kailangan i-prove nyo sa akin na it's more than that. Kasi yun ang lumabas na figure sa amin. Kasi kami nag-fact-finding din, yun ang lumabas na figure. Ayoko naman pong mag-assume na more than that nang wala namang support, di ba? We are not here na hearsay. We want actual yeah. figures here. Kasi we are solving problem. We should know the problem. Yes, uh, Miss uh, Ay, Nuki. Pwede po yeah, ba yeah. akong magbalik lang, tatapusin yeah, okay. ko lang po. Tung, yun po kasing usapin ng blood money ay napaka-critical at uh, maraming salamat sa inyo kasi finally, it's out in the open na pinag-uusapan. Kasi ho, ay ang malaking bahagi ng ating mga OFWs ay nasa Gulf countries and Arab countries na mayroong Uh, justice system na nakabase sa Sharia at kasama dito yung blood money na usapin. At ang dilema talaga po ng gobyerno, lalo na kung parehong Pilipino yung involved, obligado yung gobyerno na tulungan na magkaroon ng hustisya yung na, na, na agreed o yung namatayan. At the same time, meron siyang obligasyon na magkaroon ng due process yung nakapatay. And in both cases, may moral dilemma din po yan, both not only in the government, but even in our part, kasi we also assist migrants. Kasi minsan ang lalapit sa amin, like sa kaso po ni Jose Lito, lumapit din po sa amin yung sila Miss uh, Rosemary Sapanta, at iba pa pong sila Don Don Lanusa po, ang issue nila, bakit nyo tinutulungan yung mga yan, ay sila yung nakapatay. So, are you condoning yung wrongdoing? And in this case, crime, crime po yung uh, pinag-uusapan. Naman po, kapwa Pilipino, tsaka magbabayad naman ng blood money. Ay, pero eh, ang gusto system. ko lang pong sabihin, sa so, usapin na ito, ang gusto namin iparating sa gobyerno is, we may not be assured that they will be uh, uh, spared from the death penalty, pero ang gusto namin i-measure sa gobyerno ay hindi dapat sila magkakaroon ng pagkukulang sa kagyat na pagtugon sa mga problema. 
problema ng or dapat hindi sila magkaroon ng ng uh, uh, they should not be remiss on their duty to immediately provide legal, consular, and diplomatic assistance. Kasi very critical, especially in grave crimes, yung usapin ng first few hours after the arrest. At dito rin po papasok yung pagiging proactive ng mga tao natin sa post to make sure na nai-inform sila properly ng host governments that such arrests were made on our citizens. Salamat po. Salamat po. Uh, after that extensive investigation sa, OF, sa ating uh, Department of Foreign Affairs and DOLE nung, uh, nung uh, several years ago na uh, nakita na may magpagkakulang yung mga tao natin sa uh, Middle East on how they treat yung mga tao, I, I really noticed a great improvement sa uh, processes ng DOLE at saka ng DFA. In fairness to them. Kaya ako po, very confident ako sa mga hearing na to kasi parang magaganda ang result after. Kasi minsan nakakalungkot yung mga hearing na after hearing it for three years, walang resulta. But this naman, in fairness to the DFA and the DOLE, they really responded. And ngayon, mas madali po na kumausap sa kanila tungkol sa pagtulong sa ating mga OFW. In fairness, I am a witness to that. Kaya hindi ako, ano, siguro noon, napapabayaan natin, hindi, hindi natin napapag-usapan, kaya nagdi-deteriorate. But uh, once napag-usapan, ang galing naman ang response nila. So we hope na yung OWA will give a good response also to this. Kasi parang mali naman yata na parang sa isip nyo lang pag nabigyan nyo na ng 100,000 pag namatay, pag accident ang pagkamatay, 200,000 you have done your job. I think uh, you have to think of how you will help yung 10,000 na nagkakaproblema. Kasi yung mga wala namang problema, wala naman yun eh. Hindi natin masyadong problema yon Ang problema natin, yung kakaunti na nagkakaproblema, dapat doon tayo responsive kasi doon tayo napipintasan. Di ba? Kailangan isulbi natin yung kitang-kita ng mga tao, nasasabihin nyo eh, ano, ano, modern day heroes, pero you don't treat them as heroes. So, hindi natin ma -e encourage ang mga heroes pag uh, we, we don't treat well the heroes. Kaya di ba yan ang sinasabi sa isang bansa na if you want to encourage nationalism, then you have to treat well your heroes. Kasi pag hindi mo ginawa yan, then sino gusto maging hero? Eh, kawawa ka pag hero ka. Di ba? O, pero pag nakita ng mga tao na pag ikaw eh, naging hero, tapos you treat, you are, yung pamilya mo inalagaan. Kasi alam ko sa military, pag nabigyan ka ng Congressional Medal of Honor, yung anak mo, pag nag-aral, kahit sa Amerika pa gusto mag-aral, libre. O. So that is enough na, na konsuelo para sa kanila pagbutihin nila trabaho nila. So ganun siguro din tayo sa ating mga OFW dapat na malaman nila na pag sila'y nagka-problema, uh, malaki naman ang kahit na may mangyari sa kanilang masama, yung pamilya naman nila is well taken care of. Yes, uh, Mr. Ms. Nuki. Um, good afternoon po, Madam Chair. Um, actually, uh, nagpapasalamat po kami sa hearing na to. At gusto ko lang balikan yung sa OWA po. Kasi sa ngayon, merong existing case tayo uh -huh. uh, na nakakulong sa JEDA. Uh -huh. At uh, ito po, nung October 2013, nagsimula yung kaso niya. So yung nanay, pumunta siya sa OWA. So ang ginawa ng OWA, nirefer ang case sa OMWA. Omwa yung pong DFA, yung kay uh, Yusek Yabes. Oo, ngayon po, nung nagkaroon ng meeting sa OWA, nitong 2015, ang sabi ng OWA expired na, kaya gusto ko pong balikan eh. Pumunta siya sa kanila, member pa siya, kasi October lang siya umalis. No? Tapos, ni-refer yung case, hindi na finalo pang case. Tapos ngayon binalikan sila, Ang reason nila, expired na yung, yung membership fee. Ang OWA po, based on the 2013 audited COA report, may naka-invest siyang 8 billion pesos sa land bank and 6 billion pesos sa DBP. Ito po ay naipon ng mga contributions ng ating mga OFWs. At ito po ang OWA, ang pera niya, puro galing sa OFW. Hindi ka nga makalis nang hindi ka nagbabayad. At ang OWA, ang welfare agency natin para sa mga OFWs. 
So, parang nakakalungkot po, natitingnan kung member ka pa ba o hindi, kung tutulungan ka o hindi. Samantalang dati po, ang OWA, once a member, always a member. Pinalitan lang yung policy nung ginawa nilang parang insurance. So, yung perang naiipon po, sa nila yung gagamitin? At in fact, lahat ng operation ng OWA ay doon nang gagaling sa pera ng ating OFWs. Do you recommend an amendment? Hindi ba may, may creation ng OWA? Ano, ano yung law na nag-create ng OWA? Under, under that law, ma'am, yung fund ng NGO purely for the purpose of using for the OFW. Oh, can you ano? talk on that? Uh, can you make a report on that? Yes. Uh, can you read that for them? Okay, eh, dyan ka. Oh. Uh, this is our COMSEC. Uh, meron daw pong napas na batas. Uh, na on the process, ma'am. Uh, yes. On the process, pipirma. Tapos na sa Senate for and House. Endorse sa president. Yes, Pero, endorsement pa lang, ma'am. Ano? For endorsement. For endorsement pa lang, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, but napasa sa House and the Senate. Oh, okay lang. Napasa sa House and Senate, nasa documentation to go to the president. Ano yung mga binago dun sa, from the previous one? Kasi, hindi po ako chairman ng labor and, uh, labor eh, uh, and employment. <laughs> ako po ay nagpa-authorize lang to hear yung case ng ni uh, Mr. Sapanta and of course our policy on uh, blood money. But uh, nakikita natin na uh, parang lumalabas yung OWA, parang nagtutulong ang DFA, nagtutulong ang, uh, ang DOLE, pero yung OWA, parang wala silang masyadong masabi na tulong considering sila yung maraming pera. So ngayon, sinasabi po nung committee secretary ko na meron na pass daw amendment sa OWA charter na uh, binabago yung proseso. So, can you read yung mga provision na relevant sa kanila para, alam mo, minsan itong mga hearing na to ngayon lang natin nadidinig yan. Ako nga, hindi ko alam na nag-amend ang OWA Charter. Kasi, kung agriculture, tatanungin nyo sa akin, alam ko lahat ang nangyayari sa agriculture. But this one is dole and uh, labor and employment. Can you read what uh, is? Ano? Ma'am, with the, with, the, with the permission of the chair, uh, we have this OWA uh, bill which is in the process right now kasi at the existing law po ngayon habang hindi pa ako napipirmahan lahat po ng mga contributions po ng OFW yun po yung nagagamit para sa MOE at sa salaries po ng uh, present uh, setup po ng, ng, ng OWA. However, under the new law, there were certain uh, changes and amendments like for example the OWA will be considered to be an NGA, National Government Agency, wherein all the uh, salaries of the employees and officers of the uh, of OWA will be coming from the government, from the GAA, ma'am. And, and the money of the OFW will be for solely to be used uh, and decided by the board for and in behalf of of the o, of the OFW for the benefit of the OFWs, ma'am. Kasi yung iba naming law na pinasa, nag-earmark sila on how it should be used. Diyan, walang indication on how it will be used. Kasi minsan, uh, um, for the benefit nga ng mga tao, kung hindi naman earmark at hindi tinuruan yung gagawa ng benefit, hindi naman nila gagawin on their own. Kaya minsan, sa law, dapat inilalagay din kung ano bang benefit ang ibibigay para to make sure that the board, when they decide, they follow that guidelines ng benefit na ibibigay nila. Hindi yung nasa discretion nila. E, paano ko ang discretion nila? E, hindi magbigay ng ganun. Hindi lagot din tayo siya. Ma diba? May guidelines din po kung paano gagamitin ano nga yun, guidelines? Uh, it will be uh, set upan kasi dito sa bagong law, magkakaroon na po ng additional representation yung mga OFW sa board. So, sila po ang magsiset ng guidelines kasi nakalagay sa batas. Dalawa po, ma'am. Dalawa. Ilan ba yes, ang board ng OWA? Twelve, ma'am. Oh, so, two will come from the yes. OFWs and the others, kanino mang gagaling? Uh, magiging... Yes, yes, yes. Ganun po. Ano, ano? Oh. Add two each from them. And then, ilan lahat yon Twelve. 
Well, well, the government, another yes. six. Another from the government. Ah, um, good, yes, good. Oh, that's better. Oh, okay. And then, ano ang guidelines ng benefit? Uh, naka, I'm sorry, ma'am. I don't have right now the... Yeah, yeah but, but general idea. General yung, ma'am, yung mga benefits tulad ng mga usual benefits plus... Uh, yung, yung katulad nito that will answer this question. Halimbawa, ang OWA member nagka-problema, what happens to him? Pag hindi siya nagbayad, automatically, wala na siya. Ganun uh, meron pong pinupost ng Senate President doon na yung payments po is good for two years. So, renewable every year thereafter. Every two years thereafter. Oo nga. Eh, kung nagka-problema nga, ano ibabayad? Ma'am, ano pa? nga eh. Sa IRR, i-discuss okay. po yun. So, ma at least alam niyo na may OWA, uh, uh, ano ng charter. So, you have to participate in the IRR para to make sure. Kasi yan ang experience ko sa government na pag hindi ka nag nagsalita kung paano gagawin, eh medyo lumalabo yung implementation. Like for example kami, uh, para from my experience, pag kami gumagawa ngayon ng bill at ng law, nag i earmarking kami. Oo, like uh, katulad po nung fisheries code, may ina-expect sila na increase penalties on illegal fishing. in earmark na namin, sabi namin 25% should go to be far for implementation, regulation, and then 75% should be given to the small fisher folks in the municipal water for shared facilities program, scholarship, uh, livelihood, yung mga ganun, uh, uh, ano ba, uh, tawag, empowerment of the volunteer group and so forth. Dapat ganun eh. Kasi pag eh, iniwan mo sa kanila yung sa kanilang complete description, discretion kung ano gagawin, medyo minsan nagkukulang, hindi napupunta dun sa dapat kapuntahan. Kasi kami, pag naghihiring, tinatanong na rin namin, sa inyo, ano ba ang bagay na talagang makakatulong sa inyo? Almost always, scholarship to the children. Yun ang unang lalabas, health and scholarship. Yes? Ma'am, kasi uh, nabanggit naman po ni Mr. Chua na, na willing sila tumulong. Mm. Ilagay ko lang po on record na si Mrs. Michelle Bedros po, yung namatayan, pinatay yung, yung kanyang asawa sa Qatar. At si uh, Mrs. Marisa Aumada, yung asawa naman niya ay namatay din sa Saudi Arabia. Parehong OWA members po yun nung sila ay namatay. Ang request lang po sana nila na assistance ay scholarships para sa kanilang mga anak. Sana po, total uh, para on a positive note naman po kung pwedeng mapagbigyan po ma'am yung I think dapat yung OWA do sa kanilang... Uh, Uh, ano kasi yan pwede naman yung mga ganyang benefit i ano na lang ipas na lang ng board nyo eh o ako uh, ba, dapat may automatic yung ibibigay do sa mga namatayan eh o whether uh, namatayan dahil uh, i, i, pinuto lang uh, na parusahan o namatayan dahil uh, pinatay dapat automatic may ibibigay kayo kasi yun namang namatayan dahil may kasalanan. Hindi mang kasalanan ng mga anak nun yun eh. Huwag nyong ipabayaan yung mga anak dahil nagkasala yung magulang. It's not the fault of the children that the parents committed a crime, di ba? And on the part naman nung napatay, kawawa naman lalo yun, napatay na nga, bigyan nyo naman na. I mean, yan naman mga ganyang privileges, ipapasa nyo lang sa board nyo yan. Hindi naman kailangan ng legislation yan eh. At ang dami-dami nyo palang pere. O, o kaya nga, bakit hindi naman? Alam nyo, simple lang yan. I-place mo lang ang sarili mo kung ikaw yung nasa posisyon ng mga taong yon At tanungin mo sa sarili mo, ako, paano naman ko sila matutulungan? Nakakaawa nga sila. Tayo, maswerte tayo. At tayo, eh, naandito sa Pilipinas. Magaganda trabaho natin. Hindi tayo naghihirap. Eh, siguro naman, Pasalamat tayo sa atin estado. Tulungan naman natin yung may mga problema para in return, di ba? Oh. Yes, uh, Mr. Mamtuloy ko Mr. lang po. Uh, of course, we're happy na merong development dun sa no. Pero while doing that, kasi gagawa pa nung IRR yun eh. In the meantime po, yung mga present, katulad nung nabanggit ko, no, na lumapit naman siya sa OWA, nalaman naman ng OWA na may kaso siya. 
So, uh, kasi po, nung bumalik kami, tinanong namin kung pwedeng magbayad yung nanay. Eh, sabi nila kasi hindi na. So, paano po kaya yung mga ganon? I'm sure hindi lang ito isang case, no? Maraming cases na ganito na pag-chinyek ay hindi na member. So, kawawa naman po. Samantalang bago umalis ang ating mga OFWs, nagbabayad naman sila ng $25 equivalent for their, ano, for their membership. I will ask our office to call yung head ng OWA para ipaunawa sa kanya na they can do this by board action eh, itong mga ganito. Siguro mag-suggest naman sila ng ano naman, kahit ano, like scholarship sa mga namatay sa abroad. Wala naman masama eh. It's good for the development of the country to educate the youth. So, by doing that, you're not only helping the OFW, you are also helping the country to achieve its goals, di ba? Yung, yung, sabi ko nga sa inyo, lahat ng hearing ko na tinanong ko, any sector from agriculture to lahat ng sector, they always say, nung gawin namin yung sugar industry bill, sinabi nila yung gusto nila scholarship for the children of sugar farmers. Nung gawin namin yung, uh, yung, uh, Coconut bill, ganun din. Scholarship for the children of coconut farmers. Nung ganun namin ng fisheries code, scholarship for the children of fishermen. Kasi alam nyo, pag pinagtapos nyo yung mga anak ng mga nangamatay, ano na yun eh? It's enough. Kasi uh, alam nyo, according to statistics, pag nakatapos ng kolehiyo ang isang bata, the chances of him being poor is 2%. Tingin ko, katamaran na yun. Kaya, naging poor. So, ang pinakamagaling na gift natin sa kanila would be education. Kaya siguro, uh, pakisabi nyo na sa head ng OWA na kung pwede, magpas kayo ng resolution nyo sa board na lahat na nagka-problema ang OFW, bigyan nyo ng scholarship yung ano. Parang CSR lang yan eh. Hindi naman yan, ano eh, lahat ng mga nagka-problema ng OFW na namatay, bigyan nyo yung scholarship ang children right, for them to meron, finish. Meron kami yung programa tungkol sa namatay, namatayan, ma'am. Ibibigay kami eh, scholarship. Eh, bakit wala silang sinasabi? Oh. In, in fact, ma'am, huminto na sa pag-aaral yung isang, oh. isa sa mga bata. Ilan ba yung children na yan? Content, ilan ba namamatay every year na OFW? Tingin nyo. Ilan ba namamatay na OFW every year? O, di 700 lang yan. That means 700 scholarship a year lang yan, di ba? O kung, kung ano, kung, uh, kung iyan eh, ano, iisa anak, eh ano ba average number of children. Tsaka hindi naman lahat eh, mga bata anak eh, yun lang mga bata anak yung underage, di ba? O, eh that means giving 1,000 scholarship a year. Eh ginagawa yan ng kumpanya sa CSR eh. Eh kayo, o oh, wapa kayo eh, di ba? O, oh. Di ba? Pera naman nila yun eh. Sabi mo doon sa head mo, magpas kayo ng resolution. Kasi resolution lang yan. Di na kailangan legislation dyan eh. Resolution lang ng board yan eh. Bilangin nyo, mag-aral kayo kung ilan ang namamatay every year. Bigyan nyo na scholarship yung mga anak. Pero wala nang pupunta sa amin na nagre-reklamo. Kasi tapos na problema nila. Papakainin na lang nila pero yung pag-aaral, libre na. Diba? Madam Chair, baka yes. pwedeng isama yung maski hindi pa namamatay yung head of the family or ano. Kunyari, nakakulong. Marami rin nakakulong, di ba? Yung families nun, tulungan. Kasi bago po kasi umalis dito, member yan eh. So kung nagka-problema siya doon, madalas naman, di ba, because of circumstances doon, so dapat tulungan natin sila. At yung pera na yun naman, kanila yon Anong gagawin natin sa pera na yun po? Baka mag-hearing ulit para pag-usapan kung anong gagawin dun, di ba? Sa laki ng pera po. So, bigyan na natin sa mga contributors ng fan na yon Salamat po. Uh, uh, have a meeting with them uh, in a separate occasion. Hindi na hearing na we will enjoin them to pass a resolution kung ano ang maibibigay nila based on studies na about education. Kasi naman, lahat naman tayo ang ating ano is education. Even, I think, the national government, yan ang answer nila sa ating problems on poverty is education. So, we'll encourage them to give educational benefits dun sa mga tao. We will, ano, ano din. 
So we go now to uh, POEA. Nandito ba ho yung POEA? Okay. I, uh, they want to require our employment agencies to implement measures or mechanisms, mechanism to effectively, effectively monitor the condition or status of the OFWs that they have deployed so that in case these OFWs encounter distress, uh, they will be able to render immediate assistance or at least inform the appropriate government agencies to render timely assistance as well. Do you have existing rules and regulations for employment agencies on this matter? POEA. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, regarding that matter, Your Honor, there is a present uh, policy already and rules regarding uh, monitoring po. Mm -hmm. uh, under the POA rules, the recommend agency should uh, monitor from the conditions of the OFW they are deploying. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it is also a requirement that they should report uh, significant incidents mm -hmm. regarding the plight of the OFW. By, uh, by monitoring, uh, Your Honor, uh, we believe that uh, we can prevent uh, accidents or uh, abuse or harassment on the part of uh, the OFW. That's why uh, we maintain that policy, Your Honor, that uh, the recruitment agencies have the obligation. It is pro also provided in their undertaking, Your Honor, for application Yeah, but for how about the implementation? And dami naman nating rules, but uh, what do you think of the implementation of the rules? Ibig sabihin, do they do that? Or it's just a uh, pirma lang sila ng pirma, tas wala namang resulta. I mean, let's say, dineploy mo ganitong karami, ilang percent ang nare-report na kung may nangyayari? Your Honor, uh, they're being required to uh, report, they are reporting, Your Honor, uh, significant incidents uh, from time to time, Your Honor. At the same time, in case of uh, repatriation cases, Your Honor, uh, if there is a report for, uh, or request for repatriation, the POA to the, through the repatriation unit, Your Honor, uh, coordinates with the recruitment agencies for the immediate repatriation of the workers within 10 days. Makaka-comment dito on the performance of the POEA in the implementation of yung pagre-report kung ano na nangyayari do sa mga dinideploy ng agencies? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, POEA really requires each agency and uh, they channel it through uh, associations. Especially ngayon yung uh, crisis sa Middle East, uh, POEA, uh, they called us at uh, nagkaroon po kami ng, uh, pag, nag-submit po kami ng mga inventaryo lahat ng uh, dineploy naming workers. Okay naman to. Opo, in in uh, this very... aspect, okay. Uh, ito, another is, uh, are, uh, are OFWs bound for Middle East uh, uh, na orient towards customs, basic clothing, and uh, uh, redistributive justice principle, yung mga ganun ba? Kasi alam mo, iba rin naman ang culture sa Middle East. Do you conduct uh, uh, this kind of orientation para hindi sila nakukulture shock sa Middle East? Kasi malayong malayo ang culture ng Middle East sa uh, Pilipinas. Uh, Your Honor, with your permission ba? Actually, meron pong ano, dalawang uh, information na uh, campaign on the part of the POA and OWA, no? Meron po tayong tinatawag na PIDOS, yung Pre-Departure Orientation Seminar. In the PIDOS po, uh, this is uh, being done uh, before deployment of the OFW. Tapos meron din po kami sa POA yung Pre-PEOS or Pre-Employment Orientation Seminar na yung mga applicants or kahit hindi po OFW, they will be educated regarding the situation abroad po. Pati ko po yung culture, ang, pati ang po yung... very concerned lang ako, Middle East, kasi medyo ibang-iba ang tradition, ang culture doon. I mean, kung pumunta sa Hong Kong or Singapore or any European countries, medyo ma mas madali-dali. Pero sa Middle East, naiiba eh, di ba? Ibang-iba. Kasi, kaya dapat may special orientation yung Middle East kasi iba sila dun eh. Iba. Yes? Yes. Ma'am, can I... Uh, country specific. Oo. Yes, may country specific kayo na orientation. Kung saan yes. pupunta yun ang orientation? Ganun ba? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, meron po sa OWA yung PIDOS. At the same time, sabi ko nga po yung sa uh, Ma'am, ano? sa, sa PEOS po. 
Ito yung prem. Oh, prem. ayun nag-o-orient. Oh, oh. Ano yung pitos? Country specific yon or what? Oh, nagagawa ba yon? Nagagawa ba yon? Ah, uh, tanungin sa, natin yung private sector kasi minsan syempre government sasabihin nila nagagawa yon, pero tatanungin natin yung private, yes, uh, Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair. Regarding po sa PIDOS, dekada na po kami humingi ng konting modifikasyon niya, revision. Hindi na po responsive yung PIDOS syllabus and curriculum na binibigay ng OWAT ng mga PIDOS accredited service provider. Nakipag-usap po ako sa OWAT, sa kanilang uh, PIDOS chief, ang sabi sa akin, Karashid, sa board ka makipag-usap. Kasi nasa Saudi pa ako, binigay ko po sa isang labor, welfare officer yung curriculum namin na responsive na alam namin. Eh, nalumot na po, ma'am chair. Yeah, I actually I was uh, with Secretary Baldos the, the other week, last week, and I mentioned to him about the PIDOS because uh, to not only country specific, but especially for the Middle East, dahil ang sabi ko is that most of the problems that we encounter in the Middle East is due to the non-resolution of the conflict between the employer and employee. Habang natatagalan yung yung kan resolution ang tendency is nagraran away pag nagraran away ibang problema na noon disyempre ang kanon kami na kumahabol later on it will come le years later when they come come out no na may mga problema na sila and then sabi ko ganon malalesin natin yan kung we resolve it at that level pag nung naguumpisa pa lang yung away sabi ko so anyway i i i i, I told secretary beldos that you, you tell us, because I've already instructed the ambassadors in Riyadh and in, in, in Jeddah, the Consul General, to use, immediately use our lawyers, we have retained lawyers already for Saudi Arabia, to assist in the resolution of the conflict between employer and employee. Wag lang, so, pag hinahihirapan yung labor atas eh, do sa resolution ng nung, nung, nung employer employer eh, gamitin na natin yung abogado natin, lawyer kagad natin. Kasi, of course, they have their own way of, uh, you know, tatawagin yung, yung Saudi employee, uh, not on, the recruiter na Saudi, di ba? Yung employer na Saudi, tapos yung recruiter ng Pilipino, di ba? Lahat yan, kinakausap eh. And uh, I said, we, to, para mabilis, gamitin na natin para makatulong. Mas na paano? To lessen the future conflicts. Uh, oh, in the beginning. Uh, uh, you know, in, in that connection, uh, during the GAA, kasi nung previous GAA, ang budget for legal assistance is 30 million. And then we asked them, uh, kulang, nag-increase kami to 100 million. Tapos this GAA, we asked, ano ba yan? Kulang ba? Sobra? Underutilized daw eh. nag lang nila parang 70 ba? Oh, so, hindi kami nag-increase ng budget kasi hindi nga nagamit lahat eh. Kaya parang for the information of everybody, hindi naman po kami nagtitipid sa legal assistance. Basta mag-request lang sa, sa, mga, sa legislators na increase ang budget ng legal assistance. Kasi dyan kami open na open yung hihingi ng budget for OFW assistance. Kaya yung 100 namin na ibinigay last year, hindi in-increase kasi sabi nila, hindi daw nila naubos eh. Kaya sabi ko nga, uh, pag mak makakatulong yung lawyer, di mag-hire ng lawyer kasi hindi naman tinitipid dun eh. Oh. For, for the information, ma'am, uh, madam chair, uh, last year we had, uh, for our legal fund, we uh, utilized 99% of the illegal fund. Yes. Yeah. Marap, siguro na-utilize nyo after the budget hearing. Kasi tinanong ah, yes, yes, namin, yes, yes, yes. Uh, gusto nyo ba dagdagan? Okay. Nagbo-volunteer na kami dadagdagan. Sabi nila, hindi ho namin nagamit eh. Hindi pa nagagamit eh. So, hindi kami nagdagdag. But kung sinabi nila na kulang, nagdagdag kami. Kasi nang galing yun sa 30 million, Yun lang po binabantayan namin eh, yung repatriation at saka yung legal assistance. Kasi pag hindi nyo po tinulungan, kami naman po ang kawawa kasi sa aming office hihingi ng assistance, eh wala naman kami pidap. So ano naman na ibibigay namin. Kaya sa amin, okay nang ilagay sa budget para kayo na ang tumulong kasi wala naman kaming ibibigay. Diba? So, yun po. So, next ga 
Sabihin nyo lang po kung ano yung reasonable na budget and we will work for that. Wala man kumukontra eh. Pag ini-increase yun eh. Walang kumukontra sa Senado. Okay. So, yes. Uh, uh, sa kakampi po ako yung families ng migrant workers. no So, yung, yung, yung pong sinabi nyo kanina, maganda yun sa OWA. Yung mga scholarship. Sana nandito na kagad. Kayo na mga madam ang mag tawag dun sa administrator. Kasi makahamba, matagal lang pa yan pag hindi tayong miss umax yan. Kasi ang tagal, ang hirap pong umaccess po kaya sa kanila. Totoo po yan. Kasi kami, madalas kaming pumupunta dyan. Ako, ang hirap po. Even sa DFA po, sir, kung natatandaan nyo, marami po kaming sulat sa inyo. Yung sampila po, nagkikater sila ng maraming OFW doon. Nangihingi lang po sila na i-accredit nyo sila. Hindi po kayo sumasagot doon sa mga sulat namin. Sa inyo ko po ina-address. <laughs> eh, <laughs> padala mo na lang sa amin sa inyo po. po forward namin sa kanila. Kasi sila po yung tumutulong doon. Baka kasi magkaroon ng problema. Kasi sometimes 17 na OFW yung nandun sa loob ng center nila. Eh kung hindi nyo i-accredit, magkakaroon ng problema dun sa andun. Sir, hanapin nyo yung kakampi, may sulat kami sa inyo. Tapos, uh, yung sa PIDOS naman, uh, madam, eh yung PIDOS, hindi kaya halos ng OWA yan kasi ang dami po ng mga household service worker. Nung panahon na ano, sabi nila, ay dahil may ano eh, ba Sir John, may ano, tawag dito, sobrang dami nung ipipidos sana ng mga NGOs kasi pidos provider po kami. Kinuha ng OWA yun, yung, yung pidos ng household service worker. So talagang ang dami-dami po noon. Pero sa tingin namin, dahil sumasama kami doon, hindi din kaya nilang masyado kasi hindi nagbibigay talaga yung totoong ano, pidos. Yeah? Yun, kaya parang sinasabi namin, eh ba't hindi nyo pa ibigay yan sa mga NGOs o kung sino man yung pwede. Na mag Alam ko ang DFA, gusto nila magpidos eh. No, nakausap namin sila. Ay, nakausap namin kayo nun <laughs> Parang, uh, may isang meeting nun eh, sabi nyo, Fendi. So, parang ang sinasabi lang natin, uh, magtulungan nga, sabi nga ni Madam, magtulungan tayo. Pero kasi ang nangyayari, pag nakakausap, lagi nga pakahigpit sobra. Pero pagdating doon naman sa implementation, hindi gano'n yung nakikita ko eh. So, parang, maganda yung PIDOS in particular. Pero, yung iba kasi, halimbawa, Dalawang oras, it's okay na ba yun? Yung pidos na yun? Dalawang oras? Anim nga yung sinasabi sa amin ng oh, eh. Pero yung sabihin, di ba? Sa POE, kasi dalawang oras lang yan eh. So parang, tapos pag NGO, kailangan anim. No? So okay lang po yun, kaya lang tingnan natin yung nakikita kasi namin yung parang sobrang higpit nyo sa mga NGOs, pero pagdating naman dun sa kanila, hindi naman ganun kahigpit. Ba't hindi na lang nating mag uh, mag uh, mag ano magpili ng mga NGOs na magtuturo ng PIDOS. Total yan naman ay kanilang advocacy. Uh, ano naman nila yan? Edi bayaran niyo na lang sila ng uh, gastos para kasi marami namang NGO sa OFW eh. May mga party list pa nga sa OFW. Eh, ano ba gagawin nila na service sa OFW? Eh, di, yung iba magpidos na lang, di ba? Para maging effective yung pidos. Kung sinasabi nyo na hindi effective. Kasi alam mo, tinitingnan ko yung Middle East. Talaga mabigat pumunta sa Middle East. Kasi ibang-iba ang culture nila. Dapat yung mga pupunta sa Middle East, eh dapat eh, an, i-train na natin na gano'n ang i-expect nila para hindi sila nakukulture shock pagdating doon. Kasi kaya nakakaloko-loko buhay, nakukulture shock. Akala nila pupuntahan nila eh. Napaka, kala mo pupunta sila sa Disneyland eh. Hindi naman pala Disneyland yung pupuntahan nila. Yes. Ah. Ma'am, also if I may recommend, kasi ngayon marami talaga nababahala na OFWs natin, lalo na sa Saudi and pinapanood nga nila eh, sa ceasefire sa Syria kasi alam naman natin may mga proxy war doon tapos bumababa pa rin yung presyo ng langis baka total i-review -re yung assistance from OWA eh, parang hindi pa rin klaro kung ano yung assistance ibibigay sa families ng mga stranded sa sa, sa Middle East dahil yung yung companies nila hindi na nakakapagbayad ng sweldo pero yung workers ayaw umuwi dahil inilalaban nila yung yung benefits nila, parang hindi pa rin malinaw, ma'am, yung anong tulong mula sa OWA, anong tulong mula sa POEA, sa DFA, paano yung immigration penalties, hindi kasi nakasulat lahat yan eh, 
parang on a case-to-case -case basis na nalalaman. Kinasabi nyo, in addition yung problem ng blood money, another immediate problem brewing is yung mangyayari sa Middle East because of uh, the war, and then at the same time, yung uh, low prices ng, ano, yes, po. ng oil, di ba? Oil and uh, war. Oo. So, but that is another topic that yes, we po. should uh, plan for. This is different from here. Baka ma-out of topic na tayo. So, dito ang pinag-uusapan natin ay yung welfare ng mga OFW na in distress, yung with regards to the blood money, yung blood money nung mga uh, uh, naka, yung raising ng blood money para dun sa nakapatay at yung blood money nung napatay. Oo. So, this is not anymore about just the Sapanta case, but there are also other cases na sila naman ang pinatay, na hindi sila nabayaran ng blood money. So, we have to look into that. And, uh, if there are others na gusto mag-comment, uh, 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 meron bang sasabihin ng dole at saka yung mga uh, nakasalita na yung, meron pa bang sasabihin yung OFW groups? Yes, yes. ma'am. Uh, ma pwede ho ba nating uh, paimbestigan po yung ano? Bakit nakauwi po yung... Uh... Ibigay na natin sa DFA and they will research on them. O, kailangan lang bigyan natin sila ng background ng two cases, ano? Opo, ma'am. Na, o, ayun pala, nabigay na. They will respond. Kasi, ma'am, 12 years po ako sa Saudi, never talaga makakauwi ang isang nakapatay. Kaya nga. There's no such thing as din sila, eh. amnesty have, eh, oh. sa murderer po. Eh. We will look into that. Kasi sila nagulat din, eh. O, Salamat, ma'am. We'll, we'll look at that. And that will form part of our experience in uh, doing this. So, meron pa bang sasabihan? Yes. Yes. Nabanggit po kanina yung pag, uh, mag, pag perform noong pag-initiate ng discussion at saka yung grupo on the blood money na nastol. So baka po pwedeng maituloy yon at uh, mas maging participative din ma-include sa, sa discussion sa mga civil society. Thank you. The document po natin yung nangyari today and then we will draft whatever our solution and then, pakikita namin sa inyo kung may other comments pa kayo bago natin i-final yung courses of action natin. A few minutes lang, Madam Chair. Tungkol po sa PIDOS, may we request the Chair to please make an investigation sa side ng OWA. Sino-sino po yung mga PIDOS accredited service provider? Kasi sa information namin, hindi nga OFW kung saan-saan lang pinulot. Anong right niya magbigay ng orientation tungkol sa mga OFW papuntang Saudi? Pangalawa, nag-apply po kami ng accreditation. Kami, na 32 years po ron, hindi mabigyan ng ng right kasi yung sabi na on hold daw po yung accreditation. Yun lang po. Suggestion ko, if that is a good suggestion, na marami namang NGOs na OFW ang advocacy, baka pwede tayong mag-accredit uh, mag ng reliable NGO. At least itong magtuturo na to nandun ang puso. Kasi anybody can teach, pero pag wala, hindi mo advocacy yan at hindi wala sa puso mo yan, Paloko-loko lang ang turo niya. Kasi nakita ko na po yan sa ibang ano, program ng government na, you know, they're just doing it to make use of the money of the government. But actually, in terms of result, eh, pangit. Like, for example, yung, yung kanilang uh, uh, training program for agriculture, nireview ko yun. O di, paloko-loko din. O, so, we can improve on that. Importante kasi po, yung nagte-train, may heart for the for the OFWs. Kasi pag wala silang heart, eh, mangungulekta lang sa inyo. Hindi naman nila talaga concerned na matulungan yung OFW to be able to adapt to the situation. Pero kung mga NGO yan, na ang advocacy niya ni OFW, mahal niya na mga OFW. Kasi, kaya pagbubutihin niya. Kasi sila din kasi, katulad ng mga NGO sa OFW, sila rin naging OFW eh. So alam nila yung problema na na-encounter nila. So ako, ako ang mag-head ng OWA, eh, yun ang pipiliin ko, yung may heart dun sa trabaho, para siguradong maturuan ng ayos yung mga mag-aabroad. Kasi yung tingin ko dun sa nag-aabroad, nangangarap sila eh. Hindi nila alam kung ano yung dadat na nila doon eh. Yung iba nga nagugulat eh. Kasi akala nila mag-a-abroad lang sila, magta-travel sila, nakalimutan nilang ang hirap mabuhay doon, di ba? Hindi, hindi nila alam eh. 
Kaya pagdating doon, na ano, nakukulture siya, 'di ba? Kasi nakikita ko yung ibang umuuwi eh eh bakit inexpect ba nilang madali yung pupuntahan nila? Dapat masabi sa kanila 'yon kasi ang expectation nila it's so easy. Kaya pag nahirapan doon, nasisiyak eh. Oh, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um magse-segue po ako ng konti kasi as as we speak Uh, marami pong mga OFWs ngayon sa Saudi Arabia particularly. Yung grupo ng uh, Muhammad Al-Mujil, yung grupo ng Saudi OJ, at saka yung grupo po ng Saudi Bin Laden. Hundreds of them, surpassing even thousands of them, yung stranded ng napakahabang panahon na po ngayon doon. Now, I, I'm sure the, the, the government is doing their, their part naman po, in fairness to them. May mga visits. But just now, pumasok po yung balita sa akin, isang Pilipino from Saudi OJ hung himself. Just now, as we are holding the hearing here. Now, ang point po kasi, kaya ako inire-raise ito, baka po po pwedeng paigtingin ng ating mga nasa post yung uh, pagbibigay ng, uh, siguro dahil nga po sobrang tagal na hindi sila sumusweldo, uh, kutakot-takot na litigation ang inaabot nila ron sa paghahabol doon sa kanilang rights. So siguro... Para po, ang akin po, kaya ako uh, pinaaabot ito, nandito yung OWA, nandito ang, ang DFA, uh, baka po po pwedeng paigtingin yung pagbivisit dun sa mga lugar na yun where hundreds or even thousands of our uh, OFWs are, are in distress. Uh, alam po namin na mabigat yung problema na kinakaharap ng DFA at ng, uh, ng OWA sapagkat ito po ay libong OFW at yung mga kumpanya po, some of them ay bankrupt, nag-declare ng bankruptcy. So, ang sinasabi po namin dito ay uh, baka pwedeng paigdingin yung pagbibisit, pagbibigay ng uh, counseling para maiwasan po itong magbibigting ganito. Uuwi pag wala na ang employer? Yes, uh, you sex, Yabes. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, with regards to MMG, you know, we've been... Uh, negotiating with the company for several years now, actually. Uh, we cannot, some have already returned, but there are still many who have not been able to return because of the, uh, the, the company doesn't want to pay the penalties for immigration, and of course they don't want to pay for the ikamas, the fees for the ikamas, no? Uh, but however, the other day, the other day, the other few days ago, uh, we already received information because we have been lobbying no less uh, with the king of uh, Saudi to allow our people in the MMG to be repatriated. And uh, we were ready to, you know, bring them all home, you know, except that the immigration penalties and the ikama fees were quite hefty, you no? Know? Uh, actually, our computation was around 16 million US pesos, uh, pesos, no? Uh, one six, I think, one six, one six. And uh, we, uh, no, no, Money. We, <laughs> were, <laughs> we were able to, <laughs> no, we were able to, papirmahin na lang yung mga donors. We were able to, uh, to get a royal order, so waiving all these uh, penalties, no? for the ikamas and for the um, uh, the immigration just for the Filipinos huh? hindi yung other nationalities just for Filipinos so we'll start uh, moving them out already uh, yeah. whoever are uh, left of the people in uh, at uh, the MMG group with the others were still are as you know this they were all brought in legally to work you know so in in that case you know this has to be resolved of course by the labor people and they have been doing their job ayun nga lang kung libo-libo na kasi di ba medyo nakagulo rin yan eh no but we are there no the fa we would always go there and tell them if you want to leave now we will have you repatriated no kung gusto mo na umalis i want to ask question kasi yung 
yung budget for repatriation is 300 million, di ba? And then nagbibigay ang at yata ang office uh, social fund ng president na another 150, so for a total of 450, tama ba ho yun? As of now, it's, uh, the budget has give, given for 400, 400. 400 million. So is that enough to cover yung ganito? As of, as of now, yes. you know, the start of the year, yeah. More yeah. less. So, ibig sabihin nyo, yung 400, uh, kasi gusto ko lang po malaman para for our guidance sa GAA kung kulang ba yun o tama yun. Kasi, kasi naman, ho, kagaya ho nung repatriation nung sa Libya, we went beyond that because the president was always giving. Giving, you know, oh, pag so, uh, kakulang. So, okay na yun. Pag, pag may, may emergency repatriation, nagbibigay ang presidente. Eh. So, okay lang yun. Okay, for your info also. Kasi we're always watching that, yung budget sa repatriation at budget sa legal assistance. Ngayon, yung OWA, dapat kayo naman na magbigay ng budget for scholarship ng children ng mga nagkakaproblema ng OFWs. At least yun naman ang gawin nyo kasi yung ibang companies ginagawa yan na CSR, eh kayo talagang yan naman ang trabaho nyo. Ibigay nyo na yan. Ang, hindi naman kayo masyadong nakukomplain dito. Kasi ayo din naman namin na masyado kayong tinatamaan ng mga complain ng mga tao. Hindi naman namin kayo gustong awayin. Pero pag sobra-sobra naman kasi ang complain, dapat uh, you act on it. Sabi mo dun sa head mo, Okay. Ma'am, clarificatory question lang kay Yusek. Yeah, bes, kasi marami, nag, marami rin talaga yung, yung pamilya na ang nagpapadala sa kanila sa Saudi dahil wala na nga makain, dahil anim na buwan na hindi na sesweldohan. So, ibig sabihin, ma'am, yung, yung sinabi niyo 400 million na parang repatriation fund. Opo. Can, that can, at least may standby fund. Eh, they don't need to worry about yung pagpapauwi sa kanila yung mga gustong umuwi para lang po kwentas claras na yes uh, we 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 do that uh, but as as you, as you know no kasi since they were deployed legally there are people who are responsible for their return ayan no the local emplo the local recruiters are supposed to be under the law responsible for bringing them home and that is para ang nangyayari is that Ang, ang nangyayari is that the local employee, meaning the local recruitment agencies, you know, they would really love the government to step in so that they won't have any responsibilities anymore. But I think Dole has been very strict with them that they should also put up a share of this cost. But, uh, yeah, that's one. But what we do is that if they want to come home, uh, if... That is true, ma'am. If they want to come home, just we bring them home. There's no, there's no problem with that. Madam, can I add? Um, ang problema po kasi doon economic, ma'am, eh. Dapat reviewin din natin yung IC. Kasi meron tinatawag na mandatory insurance ang lahat ng OFW. Kaya nga, ito nga, mas malaki pa nga yung nakukuha ang beneficyo na itong mga mandatory insurance kaysa sa OWA natin, eh. Uh, uh, 100,000 US dollars. Pero pagka ito nga po, tulad niyan, economic, uh, tulad nung experience natin ng Libya at Syria, di ba ang tagal na bayaran ng mga workers or they, they don't want to release money from the insurance commissions just because war yun, hindi covered. Eh, lalo na yung economic, I think ipatawag din natin next time, ma'am, yung uh, insurance commissions regarding the mandatory insurance kasi billion dollars na kinita nila magmula ng inimplemento eh. We will look into that, and so uh, uh, wala na siguro tayong uh, ano, mga questions pa uh, to para sa atin, eh, para i i i summarize natin what we have done. So, we will look into the policy of blood money, whether it's blood money for those who committed uh, uh, yung para do sa committed the crime, and for those who were uh, victim of crimes pareho and then uh, meron dyan na suggestion na re let's review yung OWA uh, in connection with what they will give their members and then another one would be yung uh, insurance so, so uh, we can schedule that for another hearing kasi dapat yung hearing natin i-focus natin sa isa lang topic para may nangyayari kasi kung halo-halo yung topic 
eh, mahihirapan tayo. So I wish to thank our, all our resource person and guests who have shared valuable information and views. To my mind, the matter needs a comprehensive study considering that there are legal apprehensions on the use of public funds to serve as blood money. Uh, at this point, siguro, uh, we will call on a technical working group. Uh, we will try to summarize and bring the summary to the technical working group kung meron pa silang comment and do whatever we have to do in the future. Marami pong salamat at magandang hapon sa inyong lahat.